Hello, and welcome to U.S. Mortality Trends Through the Pandemic. This is part five of a continuing series from this presentation. This is using data that I updated on the 6th of April, 2023, which was the most recent update from CDC Wonder, which is where I get my data from. So while this is called the, uh, trends through the pandemic, for this part of the series, I'm actually going to push my graphs back to 1999. This one is about historical trajectories of some major causes of death. So I'm going to start with top three causes of death for a long time on an age-adjusted basis. So to remind, the age-adjusted death rate is using a standardized age distribution and using the weights from that distribution, applying it to the different buckets of the ages so that, you know, those different age groups are going to be weighted equally for each of the years. So we're pretending they have the same age distribution taking the death rates for each of those groups. And in this case, for each of these causes of death, um, because of course, and we'll be seeing this in future videos in the series, the age distribution for say accidents or how accidents occur is very different from say deaths by heart disease or deaths by cancer. Uh, the concept for age adjusted death rate is so that it's not influenced by the changing demographics of the U.S. population. Okay, and the standardized population we use is approximately what was going on around the year 2000. Um, and it's, it's really around the early 2000s is where it matches. So the top, the top cause of death in the U.S. for the longest time has been heart disease, which we see in this dark, line and we can see it has been coming down as an age adjusted death rate but kind of leveled out ish at the end of the 20 teens and then tada during the pandemic it did go up and then it seems to have plateaued between 2021 and 2022 just a reminder at this point all of the death statistics for 2022 are provisional. Uh, so those numbers, it could go up, it could go down. For heart disease and cancer, it may change a little bit, but not necessarily by much. A little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, cancer has actually pretty steadily improved. That's almost a straight line uh, until we hit 2020. So from 20. 20, and actually, so first year of the pandemic, cancer death rates weren't really affected very much. However, in 2021, we did see cancer death rates go up a little bit, and it seems to have like just a wee little bit in 2022, um, but not by much. In again, future videos, I'll be getting much more into the detail of how different age groups were affected for that cause of death, you know, broadly. Um, I did put COVID in here. Obviously, it's only going to show up for 2020 through 2022, but you can see kind of where COVID fits in here, order of magnitude. Um, and so recall, okay, what are these numbers or what is the scale here? Uh, these numbers for this rate is per 100,000. So if you want something that's like 1%, that would be at 1,000. So 200 is like 0.2%. Um, so right here for cancer, that's like a 0.2% per year death rate. Um, so that's what that is like. So when we see the COVID here at 2021, at one around 100, that's like 0.1% death rate age-adjusted death rate for the population. And you can see it went up and then it went down for 2022. So 2021 was our worst COVID death year. And then it 
really precipitously dropped in 2022 because most of the COVID deaths were in the first quarter, the first three months of the year, but the last nine months of the year weren't, you know, there weren't that many uh, COVID deaths really. Uh, accidents, so accidents comprise a lot of different kinds of deaths, but it is considered a rankable cause of death. I will be splitting them out into some major causes in, you know, later videos. Uh, this includes what you would think, like motor vehicle accidents, as well as, say, drowning. Uh, it also includes a very big category for seniors, which is falls. Uh, it That tends to be, you know, a lot of people get surprised by this, where it increases with increasing age, that this is a very dangerous category of falls, and it's not even from heights. They're just standing on the ground and they fall and it's considered the cause of death uh, just from a standing position. They're very fragile. Uh, in any case, um, it's hard to see what the trend is here. And I'll show that in a moment where we'll focus in on this, but it is actually increasing uh, past like around 2015, it really starts to bend upwards and then it really went up during the pandemic. You cannot trust this decrease from 2021 to 2022, though. And you may be wondering, why is that? Well, that's because unlike COVID and cancer and heart disease, yes, these are all provisional data, and it's not because it's provisional data. It's because the nature of accidents, accident, suicide, and homicide are called considered external causes of death. And external causes of death are censored, essentially, for six months after they occur in the reporting database. That It has to do, to a certain extent, that we don't know the intention, that sometimes things are murky. Was it done on purpose or was it accidental? And that's because I didn't mention one of the big and growing categories of accidental causes of death are accidental drug overdoses. Was that uh, actually suicide or was it an accidental drug overdose, for instance? In any case, the last three months of the year are basically censored for all external causes of death. So I'm missing at least three months worth of data on accidental causes of death. That number, that rate is definitely going to go up for accidents. Uh, so that is definitely too low for that rate. So on this graph, I've put in some other top causes of death. This is not necessarily comprehensive, but they still are top ones. And I put COVID on here, again, for scale. So you can see where COVID lands compared to strokes, chronic lower respiratory disease, Alzheimer's, and diabetes. And also, I wanted you to see what the trend looks like for each of these. So COVID, again, we see it goes up and then down. Um, now, all of these, the 2022 numbers should be pretty close. The, the finalized numbers will probably be pretty close to what you see here, even though these are provisional. So what we can see is that stroke, that's this here, goes down and then it started going back up during the pandemic. So this is interesting. What you want to notice is what the trend was before the pandemic and then what the trend was during the pandemic. So it had turned around during the pandemic. Uh, chronic lower respiratory disease, this is kind of an odd sideways trend. It just seems to be going sideways in general before the pandemic and then actually kind of went down during the pandemic. So that's kind of a weird one. Alzheimer's already had an increasing trend before the pandemic. And so it did go up in 2020 and then down 2021 and 2022. So this one, you know, is kind of ambiguous, I would say, of what's going on in the pandemic. And it's, it's a little noisy. Diabetes. So it this is another one that's been kind of level and then went up a bit, a lot during the pandemic. 
So it kind of went down and you may be thinking, oh, but isn't, hasn't diabetes been increasing in incidence? So that's a morbidity thing. And it has, but that doesn't mean the death rate due to diabetes has been increasing because treatments can have been improving even if more people are getting diabetes. So that's one of the, the you know, trade-offs like with heart disease. Let's go back to the heart disease graph. So heart disease has really been coming down even if perhaps incidence in a morbidity that's having the disease may increase. But like deaths can have come down due to improved treatments, for example. Okay, I've, I've plotted these three together because these are kind of in the same order of magnitude and um, there's some particular things. Liver disease and kidney disease have a similar troubling trend during the pandemic. And then flu pneumonia, this is one of those you would think something's going on in the pandemic, but you really, this is where I'm going like, maybe you need to step back and look at the bigger picture. So let me look, show you the bigger picture. We'll be getting into the details in later videos, but this is like, let's get the bigger context because we will dig into, okay, this is what's happening at different ages when we look at that. Age adjusted death rate is trying to capture the big trend, okay? And so that's going to show us one thing, but if we break it down to like different age groups, that's going to show us something different. Um, so let's look at flu pneumonia. So what's interesting about the flu pneumonia age adjusted death rates, the secular trend, as it were, it's kind of noisy, it goes up and down, but the secular trend in general is that the age adjusted death rate has been going down. Now you might be going like, well, wait a second, the population is getting older and blah, blah, blah. Yes, but that's what the age-adjusted death rate gets around. By age-adjusting the weights, we're, we're basically erasing the fact that the population is getting older. So we're getting rid of that part. So what we're capturing here is it's not even saying that, oh, flu is not as um, impactful or flu pneumonia is not as impactful. It might be that our treatments and our prevention in terms of, say, vaccines, perhaps, but probably more um, z pack and some other things that we do to have prevention of flu getting severe and the treatments of those who are the most vulnerable to flu pneumonia, that in general, this has been trending downward. So that's great. But let's look at kidney disease and liver disease because these are not these are not great trends. So we have this kidney disease trend where it was kind of going up for a while. So 2010, this is not great. And then it came down in 2011. It was kind of at this lower level. So maybe there was an improvement in treatment for kidney disease. I don't know. However, after whatever happened to improve the kidney disease death rate in the pandemic, boom, going up. That's not good. Okay. Then we have liver disease. So liver disease, as you can imagine, is associated with alcohol use. And there's other things that cause liver disease as well in terms of poisonings and other things like that. Um, so, you know, it's kind of sideways, goes down a little bit, and then it starts to kind of slowly rise in general. And then a precipitous increase during the pandemic. So we'll be looking at that too. I am not happy with what I have seen there. Finally, our external causes of death. I mentioned accidents. And again, these numbers going down in 2022, so it's accident, suicide, and homicide are the external causes of death. The 2022 numbers are not to be relied on, and no, you can't just bump them up a certain percentage, just assuming you can trend them. Uh, there's a certain kind of messiness to all of these that no, I can't trend them, and I'm not going to trend any of them, okay? 
Uh, let's talk suicide and homicide first, and then I'll talk accident. So on the scale, and this is the thing, a lot of people don't even know the difference in scale of these death rates. Homicide is the lowest of these three. Um, there's all sorts of things I can say about with regards to homicide rate, especially homicide versus suicide. Um, part of this is there is definitely a different footprint with regards to age. Suicide is you have a broader age range where it's substantial. And we're going to see what that looks like in future videos. A lot of people never even think about these. They don't want to think about them. Let's be serious. You don't want to in general. And when they think about suicide, most people are biased towards thinking, oh, it's something that it, oh, teenagers and young people. Um, nope. That's not where the peak suicide rates are in general. And uh, so just going to tell you that. Um, homicide, though, does have a footprint like you would think in terms of where are the peak death by homicide rates. And that is, it's mainly young men, you know, um, and it's usually young men killing young men. Um, you know, there is a peak there and outside that range, the rates for, you know, your risks of getting killed by somebody else are very low, uh, outside very concentrated groups. So it's, it's, you know, it, it is pretty low, but it went up in 2020 and went up again in 2021. The full year for 2022, I believe will come in lower than 2021, but I still think it's going to be higher than it was from 20, 2019. You will note, and I, I want to note, you'll see that little spike in 2001. That was September 11th, by the way. Um, that yeah, having a few thousand extra people dying by terrorist action, that was classified as homicide, uh, as it were. Or I put it in that big category as it were. I mean, it just fell in there in that category. There is a terrorism, um, anyway, it, it falls under homicide. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, suicide, it's hard. I think you can kind of see that while homicide has been more or less, you know, kind of decreasing, it's kind of level until the bump up during the pandemic, suicide uh, age adjusted death rate has slowly been climbing. There has been a very bad trend for suicide. It actually went down a little, I believe, in 2020, went up a little in 2021, but they weren't very big movements in those, you know, compared to what I'm about to talk about, which is accidents. And here we go. This is one of the most depressing trends in mortality trends in the U.S. And it started over here. And when they saw, you know, this increase here and, uh, you know, and then it dipped down <laughs> 2008, 2009. Okay. So this is actually easy to explain. So some of these increases here. Um, so some of this is drug overdoses, but actually, here's the thing. As economy goes well, more people drive longer distances and there's more motor vehicle accident deaths. And the decrease from like this peak in 2007 down to the, the bottom in 2009, that's because that was the depth of the recession and not so many people were driving. That's really the big drive, driver of the difference in the accidental death rate, essentially. It was a lot in terms of motor vehicle accidents driving that. But the overall general increase that you see this huge swooping and, oh my gosh, up to here, is mainly drug overdoses and it's really starting around here and here is fentanyl and accidental drug overdoses there was a little bend right here you see down here where there was a little bit of a respite until we hit the pandemic and it super took off 
I mean, from a percentage standpoint, it was a huge percentage increase in drug overdose deaths in 2020 and continued in 2021. Uh, do not trust that there was a huge drop off in 2022. It, there may have been some drop off in 2022. There was also a very large increase in motor vehicle accident deaths in 2020, which continued in 2021. Uh, so, you know, if you're complaining about your auto insurance rates going up, well, I have an explanation for you. Anyway, that's been the very long term trend. And not very long term, you know, just a, a couple of decades is not that long term to an actuary. But it, this gives you the big picture on what the causes of death were doing in the U.S. from 1999 to 2022. We'll be looking at individual uh, causes of death in a much shorter period so that you can see what was happening over the pandemic and getting into that detail. Um it, the some of them I think we can understand a little better. Others maybe are more of a mystery and will continue to be unfolding even as COVID deaths decrease. So that's just something to look at. And yeah, that's not great. Anyway, so look forward to more of these videos in the future.